In this video, we're going to take a look at the project palette window and how it can be used for a number of things in Easy GUI Visual Designer. First thing we want to do is we're going to select a form so we have a form showing. Now what we want to point out is a number of the features in the project palette window. For example, you have two tabs, project and control. So you can quickly go back and forth between the two. Let's look at the features in the project tab. We have a toolbar here, and the toolbar has our uh, visual bookmark icons, very similar to the ones that are over here on the main toolbar. Uh, these two icons are for setting some parameters dealing with the uh, saving of forms. We'll leave that alone for the moment. But these two here have to do with generating code. Normally, you use the first icon to generate an entire application. But the other one is when you use an alternate coding method of keeping each form in a separate source code file, you can actually generate the code for each form one at a time. And then your code editor or external code editor will be run. Now here we have a, a button that says Edit Project Properties. Now when we click that, we'll close the form, we'll click that, we get the Project Properties dialog. Now this is tab-based and it basically breaks up all the properties to a project in categories. Now the quick select tab has a number of properties that you may want to change often and on the fly such as whether or not you want to uh, add a resource file or auto compile the resource file uh, even selecting which is the startup form in your application you can just select which form do you want to be the startup form you can change that uh, in this dialog, you can also create templates. You can actually save the current state of a project uh, properties, save it as a template, and then load it back in for other projects. And this allows you to create a variety of templates for uh, different situations and needs. Uh, you may have uh, some templates for applications that you're going to run on more current operating systems, such as Windows uh, Vista or 7, and they're going to be themed, whereas you may write other projects or will be run on legacy applications which you do not want to have themed and so it allows you to save these templates and load them back in and so you can actually select the templates once you'll have a list displayed here once you've saved a couple templates Now, some of the other tabs is each project can have its own custom colors and fonts now, each project is allowed to define four custom fonts I can say okay font number six and I can just select it and I get a font dialog or you can use the defaults that are built into the designer each project can also have eight custom colors Again, you just select the color and you can add a new color to your palette of colors for your project and eight really seems to be just about enough for most projects uh, because most of the time you usually use consistent colors throughout an application rather than using dozens and dozens of unique colors and so this works out well when having a palette for your project also the beauty of it is this is that by using a palette you can actually have dozens of forms where colors are set and then ha instead of having to manually change each color on each form for each control because you're using a palette you can actually change it one time in the project uh, properties dialog here and it, that color will be changed throughout the entire application. So it allows you to actually create an application and then turn around and say, I want to change my color scheme and then just change the eight basic colors you're using. And in every single form and control in your, in your project will use different colors. And then there's four system colors. You can select a system color. And there's 24 system colors that you can use uh, that are built into the, the system and then whatever the uh, end user system has that color set, that's the color that will be used. You can also set parameters for working with your resource compiler. The designer has the capability of uh, auto compiling uh, your resource files. It will generate a resource file for you. Uh, even add the XML theme manifest for themed applications and then actually auto compile the resource file for you before you go into your code editor. Then there's two tabs for code generation and these uh, code generation tabs deal with a variety of parameters dealing with the generation of code in each application 
and uh, it's, they're quite in depth, uh, but we'll just point out a few of them. Uh, for example, uh, the default in the designers when it generates code, uh, variables that it generates will use the uh, type identifiers. Well, if you don't like that style of coding, you can turn it off. You can just select no, and then the code that's generated will not use type identifiers uh, for variable names. Uh, you can also uh, change uh, some of the support routines that are generated uh, in the source code. You can change how it uh, defines the uh, numbers uh, or indexes for control IDs and menu IDs and so forth. Each application, if, especially if you use a uh, themed application, which you're going to have a manifest, has a, a variety of uh, values that are embedded into the executable application. And uh, these parameters, uh, for example, your company name, copyright, uh, internal file name, and so forth, can all be edited and then it will automatically be put into the resource file and your XML manifest, and then it will be compiled into your application. The form code generation tab has uh, just a few options, but it, it really is actually quite powerful because normally the default is to generate all the source code for all the forms into a single uh, basic source code file. Uh, but you, there are alternate ways of working with a designer. For example, uh, you can generate the code into separate files for each form, and then the uh, main source code file will just have your startup form in it. Uh, you can also uh, have the code just copied to the clipboard if you want to do it uh, that way. And so uh, there's some real options here in how you have your source code uh, generated. And also, uh, if we go back to the uh, code generation tab, uh, there are a few uh, options there will affect source code files. For example, there's one here, uh, declares and constants in separate uh, files. Uh, you can actually have all your declares and constants put into a separate include file, so you don't have as much uh, information into the source code, the actual code that you're working with your forms. Uh, also, you can turn on and off whether even uh, uh, the declare statements are generated for sub and functions. Uh, this is not required for PowerBasic uh, versions uh, at least 9 and 10, but some earlier versions of PowerBasic you have to have them declared. So you can turn this on or off, and again it can uh, save on code generation. The last tab we want to look at is plugins. Now the two plugins that you'll use the most are button plugins if you use owner draw buttons and you can actually write your own plugins and compile them with PowerBasic and then you compile them to a DLL and you can actually have a single plugin with a source code for all your 3D buttons in a, a single include file so that you can actually have a variety of uh, pre-built uh, 3D owner draw buttons. The code generation plugin is very interesting because uh, you can actually write a code plugin that before the code is sent to your external code editor, uh, it's passed to the plugin, and you can write in your plugin where you can actually modify the source code before it gets to your code editor. So if you don't like the way the designer generates a few things, you can actually write a plugin and have it modify the code. For example, uh, one plugin that comes with a designer is the uh, forum code cleaner. Uh, sometimes there's certain things you just want to kind of get rid of, like a lot of remarks and stuff like that, uh, when you post code to the uh, support forums. And so this plugin allows you to basically strip the source code of a, a number of uh, uh, remarks and a few other things. So you can write your own plugins. Uh, it should also be noted that the designer supports, uh, in another dialog, uh, code generation templates as well that allows some aspects of code, not all of it, but just a, a few key areas uh, where code can actually be generated based on a template, and that template can actually be used to determine how the source code will be generated, particularly for things like events and so forth, and also can add certain blocks of source code uh, to your applications, which the designer may not uh, generate for you. So here with the uh, project uh, Properties dialog, you can set a number of properties very quickly. 
to make it easy to control how your applications will be generated and uh, some other aspects of it. Well, the other things you want to look at here is if you want to create a new form, you can click on the Add New Form button. You'll get a dialog where it will allow you to select what type of form you want to add. And uh, there are options in the designer to create uh, form templates where you can actually save a template of a form. And that template will be added to this new forms dialog. So this is very uh, useful in increasing the productivity of your uh, design phase because you can actually, maybe there's forms that you use a lot. You can actually uh, design most of the form, even with controls on it, uh, save it as a template. And then you'll be able to come back later on and select it for a new form and new projects. I'm just going to close that right now. And just so you can see it, up here in the form menu, there's a save form as template. Well, if you save a form as a template, it'll be added to the, uh, the new form dialog. You can select forms very quickly, move from form to form here. And you can have dozens, if not hundreds, of forms here. You can add source code files. You just click on the add code file, and then you can select a uh, source code file and then have it added to the project. And these are source code files above and beyond what the designer may generate. So maybe using uh, third-party tools, uh, maybe database engines, and you want to add a source code file uh, for that engine, uh, you can basically uh, add it to the project. And then resources. Uh, you can add uh, resources. Resources are basically your graphics. Uh, you can say add a new graphic. I just click on add graphic. And then I can say, okay, I want to select uh, this particular graphic. And then it will display a dialog for the properties for that resource. And now it will be added to your resources. And then anytime you have a future you want to change it, you can double click it. And you can change some of the properties, such as the name that will be used for the resource, and whether you want it to be loaded from a file or be embedded in the exe in your uh, resource file. And if you need to remove a file, you can just select it and then click the Remove File button at the bottom, and it will remove that from the project. These buttons here really aren't very important until you have a very large project. And uh, let's say you've got a project and you've got dozens of forms, dozens of code files, and dozens of resources. Well, this entire dialog will actually scroll. And so rather than having to scroll up and down uh, all the time, you can click on this button here and it'll automatically put at the top the uh, forms or the code files or your resource files. So it makes it quicker to get to certain sections or categories of the files in your project. Now we'll display a form and we'll click on the controls tab. The controls tab allows you to add and modify the controls on your forms. And so for example you've got here a uh, tab con uh, toolbar control actually with uh, a number of icons for the different controls and there's quite a few controls here. There's a, a couple dozen. And you can just click on the arrow and scroll through it. And if you want, you can click this checkbox and it can auto scroll. Just move your mouse over it and it automatically scrolls for you. Now, uh, this list box is basically for selecting the current layer. We'll discuss layers in another uh, video, but layers are basically a way of having multiple layers that can be sh hidden and shown all in the same form. This is the uh, fast properties uh, property list. And only basic properties can be adjusted from here. And so, for example, you can click on the, the custom button here and display the full property dialog for either a form or a control. You can change its size and so forth. Now, you'll notice down here that the uh, units for the uh, size of forms and controls, right now it says uh, units instead of, say, pixels. Well, the uh, easy GUI. And uh, the visual designer used two forms of control and form sizing. Uh, you can use uh, easy GUI character units, which basically a character unit is uh, a unit based on the width and height of the average character size of the system plot. And so the default in most situations would be 8 by 16 pixels for a character unit. And so you can work with character units. But if you like to work with pixels, you can go up to the main menu and under Windows, say Toggle Status Bar Units, and you'll notice down at the bottom that the status bar changed. Now it says Pixels, and here 
it uses pixels instead of character units for the coordinate system. Now one last thing I want to show you on the uh, project palette window is uh, the designer is a MIDI application. If you create a form that's too big to show, it'll display scroll bars. So I'm going to try to make a big form here. And you'll notice that uh, there's scroll bars here. So I can scroll. So if the form is bigger than the, uh, the window, you can actually scroll it. Well, in certain situations, you may be working on a form. where the forms can be full screen and sometimes the problem is, is is that you don't like the MIDI window because you have to scroll around to get to it well the project palette window allows you to do a number of things to make it easier to work in a larger form particularly especially when you want to go full screen uh, the first is uh, these two little buttons here okay for example this button here says maximize work area and when you do that It'll get rid of the toolbar and the status bar at the bottom. Well, it gives you a little more space to work with. But the other button is make full screen. When you do that, you have no caption bar, no menus, no toolbars or anything. So you can work full screen and you're in a position where you have more space to work with your form. But you might say, well, if I make my form uh, really big, uh, I can't see it behind the project palette window. Well, that's solved here. You just double click the caption bar of the project palette window and it'll hide it. And since most forms have a caption bar anyways in your project, you can just, you know, keep the caption bar at the same level as the forms caption bar and it's basically out of the way and you can double click it and show it and hide it when you need it. Now, I'm going to make my form a little smaller now. I don't need it that big. And I'm going to go back to regular screen, and then I'm going to show the toolbars and the status bar. So I'm back where I was. Well, problem is uh, when you do that, sometimes you move your palette window in a different position, and you want to get back to the as far to the right or left as you want. We can go up to the window menu, and you can say reset project palette to default position, and basically you've got it uh, in its uh, top corner here. Okay, so now this shows you a lot of the uh, different things you can do with the uh, Visual Designer. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you is the uh, screen templates. Sometimes your your target systems have to do with uh, an application that is much uh, smaller or than your uh, development system so you may want to have some idea of well you know how much room do I have to work with on a particular target system and so uh, one thing you can do is you can go up to the uh, windows uh, menu and say uh, we can choose this option display common screen templates and now what you'll notice here is this, let me move this out of the way it shows common template sizes for common screen sizes. For example, there's so 640 by 480, 800 by 600, 1024 by 600. Now, the screen I'm working on is only uh, uh, 1366 by 768, but if you had a larger uh, screen, that would even show even more uh, template sizes for some other sizes beyond this. So this allows you to get an idea of saying, okay, I need to work within a 640 by 480 screen or an 800 by 600 screen or 1024 uh, by 600, which is common on your many of your netbooks and tablet uh, PCs today. So this is very useful in uh, working uh, with uh, sizing your application so it'll fit within a certain uh, screen range. And we can turn that off if we don't need it. Well, that's it for this video.